Okay, Manchester UK, brief video of the time. Stephen got out. Barton. First thing that's interesting. Barton Road Bridge. Apart from Barton Road Bridge, of course. They rebuilt these bridges as part of the Manchester Ship Canal in the 1880s. I'm going to show you the original aqueduct. It's still part of the stone structure. Inspired by the vision of three men and the toil of hundreds of nameless heroes. Francis Edgerton, the third Duke of Bridgewater, looked at his regularly flooded coal mines and inspired by the canal he encountered on a trip to France, realised that an artificial river could be the way of solving his drainage problems. Uh, whilst also feeding the region's developing industries the fuel it needed. Opened in 1761. It's 260 years old. The canal revolutionised transport and would act as a spark for one of the most dramatic moments in the history of human beings. So I'm in just the UK. I'm here to film Art and Bridges. This is part of the original canal system now. The Bridgewater Canal. So that's the Manchester Ship Canal next to us. There are the hydraulic stations for turning the bridges. There's the road one. I'm going to walk up now. Just going to get a close-up shot. The Industrial Revolution. The canal also became the blueprint for many later canals. So yeah, flipping back to the aqueducts, Barton's most famous for its two aqueducts. The first designed by James Brindley, uh, it carried the canal over the River Irwell. It's regarded as one of the seven wonders of the canal age. <laughs> There's also the Manchester Ship Canal. Edward Leader Williams built that. So, as we leave Manchester Ship Canal now, we're going to get back onto just the bridge water. The canal is 221 years old. 261. <laughs> Two hundred and sixty-one years old. Uh, this is part of the original wall. It's even got the Masonic marks in the stones. The canal's at the top there. So we'll leave the ship canal and Trafford Park. We're going to walk along and get the bridge water. So this structure is part of the old original stone aqueduct which crossed the river Irwell before the ship canal was built. Ship canal's around 1880s as I said. So that's to make it level all the way across. So when you get to the aqueduct it's level all the way into Manchester. So we'll get some of it, we'll just carry on filming because there's a minor aqueduct that goes over I think it's Bridgewater Lane or something. So we're exploring the Bridgewater Canal. We are here. I'm here too. 
but we've got to try and avoid the traffic. So we'll jump up on the canal in a minute. And this would have been a stone structure once as well. So we jump up and we're actually on the canal. Uh, I welcome you to the Bridgewater Canal. Britain's first purpose-built canal is a place of global importance. It's actually really clear. So it, the swing aqueduct on one side is fed from River Medlock. I think the water then fills that swing aqueduct, but this side is filled from another source from the other end. As we leave Trafford Industrial Park, the old site of Trafford Hall and estate, which back in 1700, 1800s and until the early 1900s, the private manor had deer forests, fox hunts, polo grounds, tennis courts and a full-size golf course. But now we enter what was Barton upon Irwell. Uh, this movie is only about the original Bridgewater Canal. Its main purpose was to bring coal into Manchester City and fuel the Industrial Revolution. So this boatyard is part of many wharfs, which have the many wharfs in the area. We've gone in towards all the mill sites. I think it's now a dry dock. The coal-fired power station that was once here used 500 tonnes per day, just that one facility. But over in uh, Worsley Delft was the coal mine. The canal was ingenious uh, and a massive player in the development of the modern world. It's what led to nuclear stations, these sort of power stations and working out how to fuel them and how to fuel the nation. Um, so it's progressed into nuclear power. So in Barton Power Station was a coal-fired power station. On this canal in Trafford Park, the facility was operational by 1923 and took three years to build. Yeah, you can just about see the bottom in there. So there's another site where the wharves would have gone towards the Victoria Mills. So they started building it in 1920, just after the First World War. Its original equipment consisted of three Metropolitan Vickers 27.5 megawatt turbo alternators. Nine Babcock and Wilcox chain grate stoked boilers, so massive boilers like you'd see on a steam train. That's some of the old walls. That's the wharf. Leads off into there, it's now blocked off. The original bridge, too. The station was all British built, basically, uh, supplying. 3,100 square kilometres of houses with power and so it can power you know a surrounding area it's one of the most modern stations of its time so coal was delivered to the power station in barges via the Bridgewater Canal. Also cooling and condensing water was drawn from the inland navigation, the Bridgewater. So it's also like a massive guitar canal feeder for most of the mills in the area. It's, uh, we'll also see Bridgewater mills 
so obviously that had access to the Bridgewater Canal. The owner of the Bridgewater Canal was obviously very wealthy and successful and also created a lot of jobs for people. Uh, yeah, so it's like a guide feeder as well as a canal. But uh, pleasure cruising was not even a suggestion. <laughs> this was a civil engineering and business pushed to its limits. No pranksters allowed. <clears throat> no, seriously though, uh, they were run like the military in this day. The, the Royal Mail and Fire Brigade were also run out like the military and the police force. Quite a lot of noise here. It's juxtaposed once again. 260 years old next to a modern road this close. The power of the power station was increased with additional engines in 1938. Uh, let's not forget there was the Second World War. Uh, during the Second World War, women took over the running of all this infrastructure. Uh, coal mining, running the power stations, making ammunition, even, yeah, even mining. <laughs> uh, so it's still here anyway. Let's have a nosy round today. So yeah, I'm trying to avoid the noise, especially ambulances. As it just disappears. That side is part of the Industrial Revolution, all the old bits and bats. This side is all the modern builds, new school and a road. So it's basically split down the middle, modern and old. I thought that was a quite an interesting point. the railway crosses so we've got something interesting remember it's 261 years old I keep saying that I know but think of that figure and the condition it's in and think of this as like the, the roads of the day it's more modern than a road as you get the sun there it wasn't the school it was black to black but that's the industrial heritage on that side modern world on the other and we're leaving the main road. That's a smaller road there now. I think that probably would have been another train line. So, Monton and Worsley. From the Bridgewater Mines, you could get to Bury over 30 miles away to their wharf to deliver coal and exchange goods. Would have took some time, but that's what I'm saying, it, I think in the day these are like the railways or motorways of today. It's been widened for the train, that's a iron or steel. And there's the old stone. So over in Davy Hume, well that's near Trafford Park, it's where the Trafford Centre is, that's where we set off from. That's the other side of the Barton Bridge. Originally two stone arches. The Barton Swing Aqueduct is a direct replacement for the earlier Barton Aqueduct. <clears throat> the masonry structure crossing the River Irwell. It was completed in 1761.
Joseph. So from Davy Hume, the canal travels through Eccles, Monton and Old Westwood. Uh, now we walk on towards Worsley. Uh, the original inland navigation only went to the mines and back to Castlefield. Castlefield Wharf in Manchester. It's actually in Castlefield. <laughs> so we can look at that before venturing towards Leeds and Liverpool. Yeah, the Leeds and Liverpool Canal and Lee Branch Waterways and the Ratsdale Canal from Salby Bridge to Littleborough and Peak Forest Canals, uh, Macclesfield also, uh, will all loop everything together nicely and there's no rush. So one day Leeds Canal can be explained uh, around Botany Bay Leeds and Liverpool Canal is over 100 miles long in all its true glory. So I'll link up all within Greater Manchester first. So, a little break here. Nice little quiet bit. A very scenic bridge. An old house too but what I want to really say is the water now we know we're getting closer to the mines because the water has a colour to it it slowly filters out as it goes along if you look close it's orange now and it was clear all the way so we're tempted to go a bit further and try and find the coal mine or something to end on also, I want to find a lock gate on the Bridgewater Canal if possible. The Altrincham Timpley Canal is featured in the intro to the Bridgewater, so for now that's been covered as well. Uh, because it flows through Cheshire, Runcorn, and into the Wirral, it's not strictly Greater Manchester anyway. I'll go to our sister city of Liverpool one day and explain its importance to the wealth and status of England, its docks and industrial strength. Well, it had a global strength, Liverpool. A strong connection with China. Anyway, wharfs were dotted around the right hand bank. Um, as I've been walking along, you've probably spotted a few. Uh, they flow into the mills and foundries near here. Barton Manor stood to the right of the Bridgewater, well, we see the Bridgewater Mill. There was a Bridgewater foundry also near the manor. It's northwest of us. The Barton Swing Aqueduct. Uh, we'll go back to that. It's a movable, navigable aqueduct in Barton upon Irwell at Greater Manchester. Uh, that's England. I write it down so I read it like a robot, sorry. <laughs> it's a long stretch to walk. Uh, it carries the Bridgewater Canal across the Manchester Ship Canal. <clears throat> the swinging action allows large vessels using the ship canal to pass through and smaller craft both narrow boats and broad beam barges to cross over the top the aqueduct the first and only swing aqueduct in the world is a grade 2 listed building uh, considered a major feat of Victorian civil engineering designed by Sir Edward Leader Williams built by Andrew Handyside and Company of Derby. The swing bridge opened in 1894 and remains in regular use to this day. Uh, the turning mechanism So the bridge is the turning mechanism uh, built into the central island consists of 27 foot 8.2 metres plate 
embedded into the granite blocks. 64 tapered cast iron rollers sat on top of the raised plate, held in position by spider rings. On top of that, an upper raised plate supports the aqueduct uh, as a circular gear track, which was powered by a hydraulic engine manufactured by Sir W.G. Armstrong Mitchell of Newcastle. The Barton swing aqueduct. I'll explain that as we fill in the gaps as it's quite long and straight, I've said that. I'm not sure if it's iron or copper that's tinting it, but it's got a very high mineral content. So, you know, it'll rot things quite quickly. You know, things in that water. I've noticed that it's started to eat concrete around some places. So even Mock Tudor on the old mill that's been refurbished. Has an interesting shed, isn't it? Mock Tudor too. And dry docks. Probably been there ever since the canal was built. So you get your boat seen to in there. So it is really pretty around here, I'm just going to walk in. Manchester UK brief videos of time. I'm Stephen Goddard and we're a world away from inner city Manchester aren't we? The construction of the Manchester Ship Canal in the 1890s necessitated the replacement of this structure so ships could get under as the height of ships you know in the new ship canal they were just going to be too big to pass under the old aqueduct it's made of stone it can't be adjusted no Manchester UK trying to get some interesting shots because it's so flat and orange so one amazing fact it's extremely long and extremely flat and extremely straight I know that seems weird to say that about a canal but if you look it's very wide it's just very level and very straight it's a very interesting fact but it doesn't make very exciting filming unfortunately so and the sun's in our direction that's where we're heading though so Manchester UK a bit of shade from that sun it's a bit more interesting now because it's going to be a pretty bit when we've reached the section so from Barton I'm just going to film now because I'm out of the sunlight yeah Worsley uh, dry docks so just film around some of the old stuff see what it actually looked like back in the day um, an alternative scheme involving the use of a double lock flight was rejected uh, because of the need to conserve water in the Bridgewater Canal above. The new aqueduct was designed by Sir Edward Peter Williams, engineer to the Manchester Ship Canal Company, built by Andrew Hamside of Derby. I would forgive you for believing we've actually gone back in time. <laughs> this is fantastic. Every canal I actually follow, as though I've documented them and I seem quite busy, I forget to enjoy it sometimes. This is absolutely amazing. It's like walking into something like Alice in Wonderland. So, part two of the bridge water start over there at that Tudor house. Peace out Manchester.
construction work began in 1890 with the demolition of the Roman Catholic school on the south bank of the ship canal. The scaling of the operation meant that the course of the River Irwell had to be temporarily diverted around the site so that the central island could be built on dry land. The aqueduct is to form part, well, one part of two swing bridges. Uh, when closed, it allows canal traffic to pass along the Bridgewater Canal. So, I have an amazing little boat house and the Tudor house, Tudor Mock. This is the real stuff here, this wall. This is where the canal splits, and I believe that goes into the coal mine area. This goes towards Wigan now. Anyway, so we'll pick it up from here. I'm going to go and have a look around the coal mine. Uh, incidentally, this is just the Bridgewater Canal. It will not be part one, part two, part three. It's just all going to link together in no particular order. Worsley, Delft. So we'll start at Worsley Delft on our next video and then we'll follow that under Worsley Bridge. Take care Manchester UK. It's probably the prettiest canal I've ever seen in my life and I've, you know I walk along them. I love this, this is brilliant. Two hundred and sixty years. Uh, incidentally, that extension would, is, you know, an update, not part of the original. The original went from here into Manchester town. Trafford Park didn't even exist. Peace out. I won't keep adding more and more. You go, just one last pretty shot. Yeah, the next one will be more of a heritage industrial type video. There's a steam crane just down there as well. Yeah, so it's orange from the coal mines and we just want the original today. 1760s stonework. Might as well take one sneak peek from the tower there's the two holes there, 52 miles worth of canals in there. Come in soon. Uh, this is a pilot tube and I'm interested to see what's underneath the water. So um, I can't actually see this footage, but I can carry on the rating. So the microphone's on. Um, I'll check what's there. But what I'm looking for is just to see if there's any life, which I doubt. It'd be pretty sterile. The ship canal underneath. The 1,500 some uh, 100 meter long iron trough is rotated 90 degrees on a pivot mounted on a small purpose built island. Gates at each end of the trough retain around 800 tons of water. The structure is adjacent to an upstream of the Barson Road swing bridge. Both bridges are operated from a brick control tower that's built on the island, we saw that. It's in the centre of the ship canal. When it is in the open position, the aqueduct and road bridge line up along the length of the island, allowing ships to traverse each side. Now that's a good idea, so two ships can go one up, one down, or two down to avoid the risk of collision. Additional gates on each bank retain water in their adjacent stretches of canal, so they're separate, the stretches of canal.